Welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Joy Prescription Podcast. This is our first episode of season two in 2023. And our theme this year is wisdom. As you may know, we are evolving this ministry to have a spotlight on women in the fields of ministry and medicine. And I'm super excited. We're going to interview an a woman each month to glean wisdom from their stories and, and just to lift each other up. And we're just privileged and excited to have Kit Roberts here with us today. She is the owner of A Renovated Life Coaching and Consulting. She's a certified professional life and recovery coach, national board certified health and wellness coach, corporate trainer, author, speaker, and consultant, and she specializes in organizational well-being and positive mindset shifts. She assists organizations in creating a work culture that thrives in all circumstances by implementing best practices in employee engagement, recruiting, well-being, workforce re-entry, and retention. And she has a broad range of human resource experience in FQHCs, health systems, and academic centers. Uh, she's a certified facilitator in addiction awareness, and she facilitates conversations around substance misuse, addiction, and recovery in the workplace. She's also a certified DISC practitioner, and I have lots more I want to share, but actually, Kit, I want you to put in your own words for us, what is your health and wellness business ministry? Who do you serve? And just uh, let's start with that. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Cindy Brooke, for having me this morning. I'm excited to be a guest on the podcast with you. So my uh, group of people that I serve are busy professionals, and I help them build a life that's happy, healthy, and whole. Um, and I love the three of those combined. And, you know, in working with people, we get to help them define um, what makes a person happy, what does help look like for individuals? And as you both know, that can be so different um, depending on age or time or where we're at in our life. What does help look like? But the one I really love delving into with people is um, what is whole. And that's where we really um, dig deep into a person's um, center and what is it that gives them purpose in life. And, you know, for me, it's it's living my best life with God. So, um Happy, healthy, and whole is what I do sure. with individuals. And then companies, I work with them, um, as you said, in a variety of ways and really want to create that environment of well-being for employees. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, let's start. Share what does flourishing health mean to you? What does it look like in your own life and, and how you try to help others with that? It's interesting how over time, what flourishing health looks like to you, you know, uh, flourishing health to me is getting out of bed and not hearing my joints go snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> in my life. Um, you know, and when I was younger, it was about being thin, you know, you, um, it was about the outward part of the body and the older I get and hopefully the wiser I get I recognize that flourishing health is about um, whole health and wellness whole being um, from our minds our spirit our soul um, and our bodies um, so flourishing health for me now is more about trying to fuel my body with healthy foods um, not to necessarily maintain a specific weight, but to have those better outcome, health outcomes mm -hmm. uh, and, and being healthy, I try to incorporate exercise on a regular basis and have found the exercises that work for me. And um, I also, of course, start my day in a uh, quiet time in devotion and find that that's really the um, center for me is, is of my wellness is, is having that spiritual health. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Kit, tell us a little bit more about your occupational and personal health journey. Cause I know for most people, 
um, our journeys can can start with a crisis or evolve out of a crisis. Rarely is it that we're just you know in our in our childhood and know exactly where our journey's taking us and how that's going to go. So, how did your personal health journey um, really take off? Sure. Um, yeah, because as a uh, talking about what we wanted to do as a young child, or I, at first I wanted to be a child psychologist. Then I wanted to be like uh, Julie on the love boat. That's dating myself. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> um, and, you know, then things just evolved. Um, but really, for me, I, I started out, um, my degree was in communications, radio and TV. I thought I wanted to be a broadcast person. But when I realized I had to tell, you know, report bad news, I was like, I don't want to do that. Um, unfortunately, I figured that out in my senior year of college. I was like, okay, well, now what am I going <laughs> to um, So I feel like my career path sort of found me. I didn't necessarily discover it, but I have loved what I've done. I've been very fortunate most of my life to have phenomenal leaders. Most of them were women. Um, so I sort of navigated uh, my way through my career and landed in the workplace wellness space and really fell in love with that. And the more I pursued the idea of wellness in the workplace, the more I kind of dug into where is my niche. Um, so I was in that space for a while and working um, corporately for a hospital system as their corporate uh, health and wellness individual. And that I did occupational medicine and uh, worked with businesses and industries in the area. Um, COVID came. And like many of us, I just really put pause. I, I, you know, we all kind of had, we're forced to pause mm -hmm. and determine, you know, what is it that we want out of our life? And in that same time, about a year before that, I had um, done a sugar fast that was part of um, sort of a spiritual journey. And it was at that time that God really started, you know, leading me in a path that I wasn't exactly sure what it was going to look like, but I knew he was nudging me to do something different. Um, and I'll back up one other, there's one other integral piece of that story that um, about 12 years ago, I was working uh, as an HR manager with an organization and was in a meeting with my boss who happened to be the CEO of the organization. And in that meeting, I just, um, you know, talking about whatever HL, HR uh, personnel issues. And I just, I shared with her that I was struggling as an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And I told her that I, I needed to do something. I just couldn't seem to get sober. And she just kindly looked at me and said, well, Kit, what is it that you need? And, you know, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. So that allowed me to do what I needed to do to um, start my road to recovery. And um, so it, in all of this, you know, God working in my life, part of it was my desire to want to pay that forward. Um, mm -hmm. The opportunity that she offered to me, I thought, you know, how many other employers would do that for their employees? Stop mm -hmm. the conversation and say, what can I do? And how can I help? Mm -hmm. So that sort of propelled me into that substance use disorder, misuse, um, addiction awareness. Um, and it was just interesting how God just, you know, kind of for me, just sort of threw it all in a pot together and said, I'm going to mix it all up and then put, put it on your heart and I'll help you figure it out along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so I made the decision in uh, about a year and a half ago that I was going to leave the corporate world and start my own company and um, took a huge leap of faith <laughs> left a in job and, um, and decided this was what God wanted for me. And I have been blessed um, in so many ways uh, by following what God put on my heart to do. Amazing. Well, I'm sure there must be, you know, some obstacles in there, um, different things that, you know, maybe fears that came up for you. I'd love to hear, you know, just your, your journey around that of how you addressed obstacles and fears. That's a commonality that all of us face, particularly 
women when we're stepping out and out of a, you know, a cookie cutter pathway and, um, you know, into our authentic lives and serving God and other people. There's, I, in my journey, <laughs> lots of <clears throat> things I've had to overcome in terms of mindset and, and other challenges, real life challenges. Um, just would love to hear a little bit about things that you faced and and how you're overcoming or overcome overcame them. Yeah. Great question. Great question. So, oh gosh, you know, there the fear. I I will say though, I, the fear of not doing it was more than the fear of doing it mm -hmm. because I reached the point that I felt, you know, kind of like the story of the talents. I felt like I, God had finally, I've been praying for several years, you know, God, what is my purpose? What do you want me to do? And so I feel like he finally was like, okay, hey, here it is, kid. I, I'm kind of putting it out there in front of you. And then for me to just ignore that for me, I felt like that would have been wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so the fear was going to my husband and saying, I'm going to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we relied on my, you know, income as well. I didn't just one day go, I'm quitting. I was, I was purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the obstacles that come are uh, just, there's so much to learn and to know about running a business. Um, but I have to tell you, because I have felt so called, um, the fear of failing has rarely enters my mind. Now, maybe I'm crazy. That is the, you know, I just feel, I, I don't fear failure, mm -hmm. which is not common for me. I, I often didn't do things in my life for fear of failing. And I would rather not have done it than to fail at it. Mm -hmm. But I just, I don't fear failure and and what success looks like becomes defined differently as well mm -hmm. in this journey. I love it. It reminds me of the Bible verse about she looks to the future and, and laughs without fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I'm> paraphrasing, <laughs> but that, that is a wonderful benefit of our faith is that we can have that confidence that God is leading us and guiding us and, using all things, even the challenges and trials and heartaches that we go through on our path uh, to uh, put together his plan for our life. So thank you so much for sharing that. Do you have anything you want to add, Brooke? Yeah, I guess I'd love to hear more about your personal journey um, through your, your rehab. And I know when we've talked before, you had mentioned um, just some, some revelations you've had about um, addiction with you experience with alcohol, but also how you see those parallels with other things like sugar in the lives of people that you work with. So share us, share with us a little bit more about some observations you've made personally and in your work. Okay, sure. That's uh, so, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to a 30 day treatment facility and it was really then that my um, journey towards health and wellness took on a very personal uh, aspect because like many people who are addicted, I lied about it. I hid it. People didn't know about it. And outwardly, I looked like a normal person. You know, it's funny. What do people think an alcoholic or a person who uses substances, you know, what is that appearance? And mm -hmm. oftentimes we have in our minds something very, um, we just don't think about the everyday person. You know, we think about, oh, the person's a you know drunk or they're an mm -hmm. addict. And there are a lot of us who are uh, suffering with those, um, those diseases. So I started, um, after I got back from rehab, I started exercising. I started eating better and really leading a much healthier life. So I, you know, fast forward a few years and I discovered I 
had probably traded one addiction for another, which is often the case. Mm. And my, I started noticing, and I'll, the, one of the specific ways I noticed that alcohol addiction looked very similar, like sugar addiction for me, was um, <laughs> one Christmas, we were having a, a Christmas party, and I walked into my bathroom where I had hidden some Christmas, these uh, chocolate crinkle cookies, you know, those cookies that have, uh, or chocolate when you cook and you sprinkle them with uh, confectioner sugar and when you bake them, they crack open a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was having, yeah, so I was having a Christmas party and I had made some of those and I wanted to make sure I got my share of them. So I stuck them <laughs> in the baggie and I hid them in my bathroom in the cabinet. Well, I used to hide my alcohol as well. Mm. So I'm in the bathroom and I open up the little bag of cookies and I'm eating and then I see myself in the mirror and I I think that looks so familiar mm. that hiding because you know people thought I was healthy I exercised I mean I was the person who brought my lunch every day and it was healthy and you know but I was going home and shoveling you know sugar in my mouth and hiding wrappers um and so it was um it was very eye-opening to see that reflection and go, I recognize that. Mm -hmm. I recognize that. Yeah. Um, so that's when I sought out the, the sugar fast because I thought God was in my sobriety and mm -hmm. I felt like God could be in the healing of that food um, mm -hmm. struggle as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was the key thing that helped you break through that like cycle of shame because you described you were dealing with something that you were keeping hidden and outward appearance everything looked peachy but yeah. on the inside you knew the truth of what was going on and I'm sure that created some cycles of shame or just the heaviness of carrying that that probably contributed in some way to that persisting of the the habits, but what was the key thing that helped you break through that shame? It was when I fully embraced my identity in Christ. Mm. And when I fully understood what being a daughter of the King meant, mm. Mm -hmm. I, I realized I could lay all that shame at the foot of the cross. Yeah. And it was um, freeing. Now, do I pick it back up again sometimes? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, but when I sit and recognize um, my salvation and the, you know, the blood that was shed for me and, and the magnitude of that love that it took mm -hmm. to do that mm -hmm. and making me a co-heir with Christ. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I would say that's when I really recognized it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And was able to lay down the shame. Yeah. And that is so powerful. Make that exchange <laughs> and to know that that identity doesn't have to, or the, the addiction or the, the habit or the whatever that external thing doesn't have to define you, but the, there's that opportunity to exchange and pick up the identity that Christ bought for us with his blood. So powerful, Kit. That's wow, beautiful. It really is. Thank you so much, Kit, for being so vulnerable, yeah. transparent. I know that your story resonates with so many other people mm -hmm. out there. And, and I, I want to give you some, you may already have this insight, but certainly from my clinical practice, I have observed over the years that people that get involved with an alcohol addiction that actually changes the microbiome in the gut. Mm -hmm. And there tends to be an overgrowth of yeast going on in the gut. And then after someone is able to break the alcohol addiction, sugar addiction 
follows because of the changes in the microbiome. It's like those little yeast are putting up orders <laughs> for sugar <laughs> to feed them. It's just such a common connection that I see. I wanted to uh, give you encouragement around that. It's no way your fault. It just kind of goes hand in hand with the biology, the physiology of alcoholism. And I know, you know, there's so many types of addiction and then the workaholism you mentioned that is a commonality that that many women particularly in, that are leaders and uh, work in ministry and healthcare and medicine where there's such great need and challenges that is a common thing that we can struggle with so thank you for highlighting your journey with that mm -hmm. yeah and I just think it's amazing too that, you know, you haven't just learned about how to help people um, create healthy, holistic lifestyles, but you have done the hard work and walk through the sacrifices and you can empathize and, with others that are in those places. And you're an example of one who has walked through that road and come out on the other side, empowered and healthy. And that is so inspiring and, and mm -hmm. makes your work even more effective that you can look at somebody else in the eye and say, I've been where you've been and I've come out on the other side and it's possible for you too. Thank you. It, it definitely helps um, in retrospect when I would cry out to God when I was trying to get sober. I, you know, for, for a long time, I would, you know, I'd be like, why God, why, why, why? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, fast forward now and, and, you know, sometimes those whys are answered. Yeah. 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 And I see so much wisdom in your journey. I wanted to highlight one thing that you did, just the reaching out for help when you were confided in your boss. That is just uh, amazing that you felt comfortable doing that. And kudos to your boss for, you know, being present and, and really, you know, asking you to, to share what you needed and supporting you in that. Mm -hmm. um, what other lessons or pearls of wisdom have you learned along the way that you can, you know, share with us and our listeners? Um, I would say as I ventured into my, you know, new business, um, I, one of the things I've learned, if nothing else, is, you know, have a plan, but hold it loosely. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it, is, it is subject to change and you know because I think we we God gives us what we need sort of in proportion to what we can handle mm -hmm. um and, and it's interesting I, I I think I've always had this you know a dream of doing this but the the reason for wanting to do it has changed over the course of, of time. And I think when, when our heart is right, God's like, okay, now, now I'll give you this. Um, so I, I think having, having a plan, but holding on loosely is one of the most important things I've learned. And, and don't, don't go it alone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, find, a, I was involved with a mastermind group for about a year and that was so helpful. Um, so I think having people to walk it with you, um, having accountability, that's the biggest, I mean, as a yeah. solopreneur, that's probably one of the hardest <laughs> is having, having some accountability because I could get up and just, you mm -hmm. know, piddle around. What was it we said earlier? Doddle? I could no. doddle through the day. <laughs> um, so I, I think it's just, uh, those are a couple of things that I'm learning. And um, and just enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's exciting for me to be at the age I am and learning new things and seeing like I can do this. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, this is not so hard after all. Um, so it's, it's exciting. It's really been exciting. Oh, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us, Kit. It's been amazing. Thank you. Now, Kit, I know you're a uh, prayer warrior and would love to have you uh, pray over our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, um, 
want to offer my prayer for everyone that I wrote for my 59th year that um, I turned 59 in November. So I, I just wanted to share this with the uh, every every woman out there. Jesus, ignite a fire in my belly that burns with excitement and passion that can never be extinguished by the enemy. Let that fire illuminate your spirit in me to others. May all that I say and do and think reflect you. Let my faithfulness be mighty, that your faithfulness be marveled. Enrich my life in such a way that it is a witness to others of the lavish love you willingly bestow on us. Grant me financial success that provides freedom for my family and can enrich the lives of others. Spark passion in my marriage that burns brighter each day and points back to the one who lit the flame. Grow me, O oh Lord, to be a servant and speaker of your eternal glory and daily presence in our lives. Point the way clearly so I can follow closely, for you are to be trusted completely. In your name, we pray these things, Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, that is so amazing. Kit, right before our recording here, I was reading a devotional about feeding the fire of the <laughs> burns uh, from God inside. So that was perfect. Love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. Um, just such a treasure. Would love for you to share how people can connect with you and get to know you a little bit more and, and take part in whatever uh, God's doing in your life uh, at this time. Sure. So I can be found uh, at my website, which is www.arenovatedlifellc.com. Um, I also have a small Instagram page, which is um, also a renovated life coach. And I'm also on LinkedIn under Kit Roberts. Um, so that would be great if people want to connect with me. Fantastic. Thank you, Kit. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Kit. Thank you for Thank you shining for your light and spreading your fire. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.